Mariana Becomes a Butterfly, an Agricultural Engineering Story. Chapter 1. Welcome to My Garden. I held my breath as I watched a speckled swallowtail butterfly crawling around the sunny yellow maguey flower in my garden. In Spanish, the word for butterfly is mariposa. My name, Mariana, reminds me of that word. That's one of the reasons I like my name so much. Papa says that when I run around my garden, I remind him of a butterfly, a mariposa, fluttering around. Here in the Dominican Republic, people in the countryside enjoy beautiful gardens year-round. Even in the capital city of Santo Domingo, people grow plants in pots. We have lots of warm, sunny weather, and most plants grow very well here. But one plant in my garden is not doing well. It's my newest plant and one of my favorites, an Ohello berry plant. My friend Pablo got special permission to bring it back from Hawaii, where he went for vacation. At first, my Ohello plant grew tasty orange and red berries, but now the berries have all fallen off, and even though my plant still grows flowers, I can't get it to grow any new berries. Papa, my Ohello plant isn't growing berries. Do you think it's homesick? My father was weeding the vegetable garden. He walked over and gently lifted up a branch for inspection. That's a very good question, Mariana, he said. Why don't we ask Tia Leticia the next time we see her? Great idea, I said. Tia Letty will know just what to do. My Aunt Leticia, Tia Letty in Spanish, is an agricultural engineer. An engineer, Tia Letty says, uses her creativity and her knowledge of science, math, and materials to solve problems. Agricultural engineers work with biology and the natural world. Tia Letty does a lot of work with plants, especially plants that we use for food. I'm sure she'll be able to help me with my Ohello plant. Chapter 2 My Plant Puzzle Tia Letty, I called from her front walkway. She came outside and gave me a big hug. How are you, Mariana? Tia Letty asked. I have a puzzle for you, I said. Papa said you could help me with it. We sat down at the table in Tia Letty's backyard. The plants in her garden were in full bloom. Everywhere I looked, there were splashes and dots of blue, yellow, orange, red, and green. As the flowers swayed back and forth in the breeze, they looked like fluttering butterfly wings. So what is this puzzle, Mariana? asked Tia Letty. I explained the problems I was having with my Ohello plant. I have been watering it and taking extra special care of it, but it's no use. That's a puzzle, Tia Letty said, but it's one I bet we can solve if we ask some good questions. Do you know how plants make seeds? I nodded eagerly. Yes, Papa told me. It starts with pollination. That's right, Tia Letty said. She had on her teacher face now. Tia Letty loves to teach me new things, but do you know how pollination works? I nodded. Sometimes when an insect lands on a plant, the pollen sticks to the insect. I've seen it happen with bees and butterflies on my maguey flowers. If the pollen stuck to that insect falls off onto another maguey flower, that maguey can make seeds. Remember, Papa, that one time I got pollen all over my nose? Once, I had put my nose into a flower to smell how sweet it was. When I pulled away from the flower, Papa laughed and pointed at my face. I had yellow powder, like fine flour, on my nose. I had picked up the pollen from the flower. What a good memory you have, Mariana. You were just a little mariposa then, Papa said. And many plants that have berries, Tia Letty explained, the seeds are inside the berries. So that's why there were little seeds in my Ohello berries, I said. If my plant is having trouble making new seeds, does that mean it isn't being pollinated? That's an interesting guess. A hypothesis, said Tia Letty. Scientists and engineers like me make hypotheses when we have ideas we want to test. 
Can you think of a way to test your hypothesis? I could watch my ohello plant to see if any insects visit it and pollinate it, I said. Tia Letty reached into her bag and pulled out a notebook. An engineer like you will certainly need a place to take notes about what you see. You can have this journal to record your observations. Thank you, Tia Letty, I said. I can't wait to get started. Chapter 3 Watching the Insects Each day as I took care of my garden, I observed which plants the insects visited. I drew pictures of the insects, kept track of how many I saw, and wrote down what they did. By watching the insects in my garden carefully, I made some new discoveries. I've always spent so much time watching butterflies flutter around that I didn't realize butterflies in all different stages of life lived in my garden. Butterflies start their lives inside tiny little eggs. I found some hiding underneath the leaves of one of my plants. They don't look much like the eggs we eat for breakfast. They look soft, like jelly. Out of an egg comes a larva. We call it a caterpillar. I watched a little caterpillar crawl across a shiny green plant leaf. The caterpillar munches on the leaves to grow fat and healthy. When it is ready, the caterpillar becomes a pupa. The pupa develops a shiny little sac called a chrysalis. Finally, it emerges as a colorful butterfly. As I watched the caterpillar inch across the leaf, chomping away, I wondered what color wings it would grow. I wonder if the insects in my garden ever watch me grow. As I get bigger each year, my legs and arms get longer. And sometimes I change the way I wear my hair. But I still look like Mariana. As butterflies go through metamorphosis, the changes in their bodies as they grow, they look very different at each stage of their lives. A passion flower butterfly fluttered over and landed on the same bush where I was watching the caterpillar. I slowly crouched down next to the plant so I wouldn't scare the butterfly. Its body was glossy black with tiny fuzzy hairs covering its thin legs. The butterfly's beautiful wings were still. It's hard to imagine that those paper thin wings let the butterfly move through the air, almost like magic. I looked back at the roly poly caterpillar moving across the leaf. Was the caterpillar looking at the butterfly just like I was? I wondered if the caterpillar knew that someday it would have wings and fly too. The week passed. I saw insects visit my magay flowers, my orchids, and my white plumeria flowers. Bees visited, butterflies visited, even some flies visited, but not one insect visited my ohello plant. Chapter 4 A Natural System When Tia Letty came to our house, I brought her out to the garden. I showed her the pictures in my garden journal. I'm impressed, Tialetti said. You are a careful observer. I can tell by the details you put in your journal. Did you find any clues that might help solve your plant puzzle? I didn't see any insects visit my new plant. Hmm, Tialetti said. Why do you suppose that's so? I'm not sure, I said, but it made me wonder what attracts the bees and butterflies to my other plants. I know the plants need insects to pollinate them, but why do the insects need plants? Tia Letty put on her teacher face. Let's use what you know to make some thoughtful guesses. I'll help you. Inside some flowers is a sweet liquid called nectar. She picked a flower from one of my plants. Carefully, she pulled the petals away and let a few drops of liquid trickle out of the flower. Some insects eat nectar as food, Tia Letty explained. Can you see it inside this flower? I squinted. There it was, way down deep inside the petals. It's wrapped up like a present in the flower, I said. So when insects visit my flowers, they're coming to eat? Tia Letty nodded. Pollination is an amazing natural system. All the parts work together. The insects visit the flowers so they can drink the nectar inside. By chance, they pick up pollen while they're eating at one flower and bring it to the next flower when they stop to eat again. Pollination is important for the plants and getting food is important for the insect. So the plants get pollinated 
And then they can make seeds that make more plants and more pollen, I said. And the insects get fed so they can be healthy and do more pollinating. Exactly, Tialetti said. I picked a small, delicate ohello blossom and carefully pulled the petals away. A spit of sweet nectar trickled out. There's nectar in the ohello flowers. Why won't the insects come eat it? Well, imagine that you came over to my house for dinner, Tialetti said, and on the table I laid some food. But I put all of the food in the very center of the table where you couldn't reach it. Do you think you would have a very good dinner? If I couldn't get the food, I'd still be hungry. And do you think you would come back for dinner again? She asked. No, I'd go to dinner at someone else's house, I said. Exactly, Tialetti said. I think the same thing is happening to the insects with your new plant. That plant is from another place. Insects here on our island might not have the right mouth parts to reach into the ohello flower to get the nectar. For them, it's like your new plant's nectar is out of reach in the center of the table. They'll visit other plants to get food. And if they don't visit your new plant, they don't help pollinate it, and it can't grow new berries. Thoughts were fluttering through my head. If there is an insect in Hawaii that pollinates my plant, maybe I could bring that insect here to help me. That's an interesting thought, said Tialetti. I'm working on a project in my lab right now that might help you think a bit more about that idea. Tomorrow you can visit me at work to learn more about it. Chapter 5. Finding Balance The next day I put on my nicest outfit to visit Tia Letty at the university. I got to see her office and meet some of the people she works with before she took me outside to a papaya orchard. This is where we test many of our ideas. Tialetti inspected one of the beautiful orange papayas above her head. She reached up and plucked it from a low branch. My mouth watered. Sweet papaya is my favorite breakfast. But when Tialetti turned the papaya over, I saw that it had a wormhole in it. Oh no, I cried. There's a mealybug in the papaya. I had seen mealybugs eating the fruit on the papaya tree in our backyard. Once they get inside, the fruit is not good for people anymore. When I was a little girl, there were no mealybugs in the Dominican Republic, Tialetti said. The papaya mealybug's original home is in Mexico. But a few years ago, the papaya mealybug showed up here. It started feasting on our papaya fruits. The mealybugs were getting happy and fat, but the insects ruined the papayas for people. Poor papayas, I said, and poor people. What could we do? One thing we could do is spray chemicals that kill insects called pesticides on the trees, said Tialetti. But some pesticides that we use can also be harmful to people. And what if some other insects like butterflies landed on the papaya tree? Could the pesticides hurt them too? I asked. Good questions, my little butterfly, said Tialetti. They could hurt them. We did some research and found that instead of using chemicals to kill the mealybugs, we would get help from another insect. There's a certain type of wasp that kills the mealybug. If we release enough of those wasps, they would stop the mealybugs from destroying so many papayas. We call this integrated pest management. It's another natural system, a system that uses the processes of nature instead of processes created by people. A natural system, just like pollination, I said. So that wasp helped balance the environment again. Very good, Mariana, said Tialetti. The environment has many natural systems that maintain their own special balance. Tialetti's explanation made sense, but something still bothered me. Wait a minute, Tialetti, I said. If I could bring an insect here from Hawaii to pollinate my plant, the insect might be helpful like the wasp. But what if it's like the mealybug and causes lots of problems? I could upset the balance of the environment. I still don't know how to help my plant. Keep thinking, Mariana, Tialetti said. If one solution does not work, then you need to think of a different one. Let's take a walk into my lab. I want to show you something that I think might help you engineer a solution 
to your pollination problem. Chapter 6, Becoming a Butterfly. Inside Tialetti's laboratory, plants were all over the window cells and tables. We sat down in front of a frangipani plant with little yellow flowers. They looked like tiny stars peeking through the plant's green leaves. I thought for a minute. My ohello plant is missing part of its pollination system. The insects here are not helping to pollinate my plant. If I can't bring an insect here to fix the problem, is there some way I can fix it myself? Can I pretend to be a butterfly and pollinate my ohello? Now you are thinking like an engineer, said Tialetti. In my laboratory, we have some plants like your ohello plant. She led me to a funny cone-shaped plant with deep red flowers. This plant does not have a natural pollinator here in the Dominican Republic. We agricultural engineers need to act like insects to pollinate it. You pretend to be butterflies here in your lab? I asked. I pictured Tialetti and her co-workers fluttering around the lab with giant wings. In a way we do, said Tia Leticia. We use a little tool with a fuzzy surface or texture to act like butterfly legs and carry pollen. I could do that, I said excitedly. Then I would be the pollinating mariposa for my ohello plant. Tia Letty picked up a small stick from the table next to her and handed it to me. There was a fuzzy ball on the end of the stick. This is the technology we use here to pollinate plants, she said. This is technology? I asked. Doesn't look like technology. Tia Letty smiled. Technology is anything that humans make to help solve problems. I don't think this tool would help me though, I said. The flowers on my ohello plant are small. I would need a smaller pollinator. Tia Letty nodded. I think you're right, but you can design your own hand pollinator. You've already shown me that you have all the skills to be a good engineer. My mind was buzzing like a beehive. I know what size pollinator I will need, but I'll have to look carefully at the shape of the ohello flowers too and I'll need to find the material that has the right texture to pick up the pollen and drop it off on another flower. That's very smart, Mariana. You can use your imagination and think of lots of ideas. Then you can create and test your design to make sure it will work. It might take a few tries. If your first design doesn't work, you can always improve it or try another one. Engineers use all the steps in the engineering design process when we are solving problems. Tia Letty smiled at me. I'm really proud of you, Mariana. I couldn't wait to begin designing my own pollinator. Chapter 7. A Design That Works All day long I worked on the design of my hand pollinator. I tested different materials to see which had the best texture for picking up and dropping off pollen. After I figured out which material worked the best, I made a handle for my pollinator that would let me reach into the ohello flowers. Now here it is, six weeks later, and guess what? My plant has started to grow berries again. My pollinator worked. I can't wait to pick some berries to give to Tia Letty. Now I'm exploring pollinators for other plants. I can make changes to my design that make the pollinators work better for different types of plants. Each plant has its own pollinator. Sometimes I think about that day in the lab when Tia Letty told me we were going to pretend to be insects. At first I thought she meant we would flutter around, flapping our colorful wings. But for my ohello plant, I really am its pollinating mariposa. The engineering design process. Ask, what's the problem? What have others done? What are the constraints? Imagine, what are some solutions? Brainstorm ideas, choose the best one. Plan, draw a diagram, make a list of the materials you will need. Create, follow your plan and create it. Test it out, improve, make your design even better. Test it out.